Hey, and welcome back to the third person camera tutorials in Unity. In the last lesson, we focused on getting the third person camera working and getting this first person mode working. So it feels pretty good, and uh, we were pretty happy with that. The next thing we want to do is really to start polishing the script because uh, the controls just feel quite a bit tighter in games like Wind Waker and Mario, and we want to get that same tightness because usually that, that means your game is pretty fun and playable. So um, you can notice here Link can easily like turn around backwards while he's running. And in our game, that is not quite the case. It's pretty hard and you usually get stuck in this sort of like really slow backwards turn. And eventually you'll turn around, but it's really not ideal. Um, so we want to focus on, on trying to get that trying to get that tighter and fixed. And the first thing that we can do to fix that is start adding um, different values to our, our blend tree here. So we're going to add a new motion field. Actually, let's, let's stop the game just to be safe. We're going to add two new motion fields. And we're going to use some animations that we have uh, that are just going to kind of tighten this up a bit. We want to use different types of run animations. So we want to have a run medium. We also want to have a run wide. So we're going to have run right wide and run left wide. And we're going to homogenize the values on the times here. And we want to set these values to something that is a little smaller because this will tighten up our turns as well. And hopefully this will feel better. And there's also some things we can do in the script, which we'll get into in a second. So let's, let's see how this looks now. That's a much tighter turn. That feels quite a bit better. So already, without even any script work, just working on the uh, animation tree, we've already tightened up the character's movement. Now we're going to build on top of this in the script. The, f the thing that we're going to be changing for this is the behind camera mode. Uh, we're going to be changing quite a bit of code in here. So we want to want to take this 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 method here, or this part of the method here, where we're in the behind state. We want to change it. So let's change that code. And what's changed here is basically before we were just calculating this look direction based on the character's offset uh, minus the camera position so we we're just grabbing that directional vector taking out the y movement and normalizing it and just using that to calculate our target position our distance away basically was just this distance away was always just pointing at the character so now what we want to do is we want to start doing something that's a little bit more complicated we want to have two variables now we're going to have current look direction and look direction so look direction is going to be basically our, our goal that's what we want to be looking at. And we're going to base that off of uh, a lerp between, we're going to be looking at a particular side of the character based on the input from the uh, controller. So if the controller's left stick, left X value is uh, negative, then we want to look along the character's right vector. Let's have a look at what that would look like. So if we're going to grab the character, this is the character's right vector here. If we hold to the left on the stick, basically like this, we want to be looking along this vector here. So basically looking in this position. If we hold to the right, we want to be looking along the negative of that axis, so along this direction. And that's reflected in the code here. So you can see if left is less than zero, then look along the right axis. If left x is greater than zero, if it's positive, look along this axis, which is just the positive, or sorry, the, actually the negative, because we're looking uh, against it. The camera direction is against it, so we want to use negative there. And we want to do the same thing for the forward based on the uh, left y value. So if the left y value is less than zero, we want to look along the character's forward vector, and uh, that's going to be the negative of the forward vector. And if the transform, or sorry, if the control stick value is positive in the y, y axis, we want to look along this, this vector here. And the way that we're going to manipulate between these two is to take the absolute value of the dot product. And the dot product, uh, let me grab a diagram real fast. So here's a diagram of what we're talking about. The two vectors that we're taking the dot product of in our code are the forward vector of the character, which is the follow x form forward, and the forward vector of the camera. So in, in Unity, that basically looks like this is the forward vector of the character. And let's look at the side of the object. And this is the forward vector of the camera. So we're looking just between the dot product of this vec vector here and that vector there. If the dot products are parallel or if they're facing in the, in the same or opposite direction, since we're taking the absolute value here, we're going to be getting a value of 1. And a value of 1 is going to mean that we're going to be looking along 
the uh, we're going to be blending more towards looking forward or backwards on the character depending on this ternary operator here. If the if the values are perpendicular, then we're going to be getting a value of of zero, which is going to mean we're going to be looking more along the characters forward or backwards. And if you look at what's happening here, that's actually the case. When we run to the side, our camera is looking at the side of the character if we hold to the left or right. So holding left and holding right both look at the side of the character. If we hold forwards or backwards, the camera is looking more at the character's front and back. So that's basically how that logic works. So we've got this goal vector here, this kind of look direction goal. And we're going to be blending that with our old uh, look direction. So if you remember how the code used to look, it looked just like this here. So there, this code here is basically now just this code. So we've got this, and we're normalizing and just doing the same stuff there. And now we're going to smooth damp between those two. So we're just going to be blending from this current, the way that the camera's currently looking, to this goal that we're trying to achieve. And then we're just going to use that now for the for the target position. And in order to make this work, we just need to create, we need to have this variable uh, exist in the script current look direction. So we're just going to create it up at the top. Uh, make a new variable for current look direction. We want to set it in start, so we want to have a new variable called current look direction that we initialize to the forward vector in start. And we also want to, uh, when we reset the camera, we want to reset that vector as well. And we want to set the damping times, uh, which are just going to be this velocity look direction damp time and this look direction damp time. So we're going to add a break to that case statement and save our script. We want to make a couple changes to character logic too, because if you see if we go into Unity now, uh, it's going to compile and give us some, some complaints. Uh, it does not create it. There's no definition for speed in character, which is a value that we were using. Um, we said if follow speed is greater than this threshold, we need to create those values. So we're just going to uh, we're going to create a new. Uh, we want to encapsulate speed, so let's refactor encapsulate field. Go to speed, set it as read only. So we don't really want to give more uh, more control over this value than we want to uh, to the other script. So we'll save that, and we also want to create this. Um, locomotion threshold. So we'll just create it as a as a variable here. Public float locomotion threshold, and we'll just use the custom. We'll just return a value of 0.2f. So that should be good. Nice. It looks it looks good there. And let's see if that fixes our problem. So before when we held back on the stick, we couldn't turn around all the way, but now it's a lot easier to turn around. So that feels quite a bit better. The controls are definitely uh, a lot snappier now. Cool, so that's, that's it for that polish bit. Uh, it's almost kind of like a bug fix for the previous script. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in the next lesson. We're going to be extending our blend tree and, and doing some pivoting with our characters.